Good catch. What's up guys? Welcome back to Blondes Building Equity. Today I'm super excited because we have another boss babe on the podcast. Uh, we have been kind of Instagram friends for a minute and then we actually got to meet in person at a real estate conference last weekend and now she's here in LA. So this is exciting because we have her in person and later tonight we're going to a yacht party. So we'll keep you updated on that guys. But I want to introduce Investor Girl Brit. <laughs> The audience goes wild. <laughs> so give us a little background on who you are, kind of how you got started. Give us like your one minute like banger of what you've done. Oh, thank you for having me. It's so fun to be here in person. Yes, I know, this is nice I'm excited. In and I love that the Instagram connections and that world of social media because you Literally. just meet the coolest people. This is how important social media is, guys. It's very important. And reaching out, like just DM yeah. them on Instagram and be like, hey, let's connect. We're both into the same thing, you yeah. know? That's how I met most my best friends, you know, just <laughs> through the world and through getting to know like-minded people on a mission to do And some you great grew your in Instagram. There's not a lot of girls into real estate that actually show behind the scenes and actually working on the project. So walk us through kind of like your first project and how you got started with that. So I bought my first house when I was 18, 12 years ago now. Wow. <laughs> it's a really weird story. So I'll just start the whole thing. But it was $25,000 for this house. But how I got the money for that property, I was six years old. This is where it gets weird. <laughs> and I got food poisoning at a restaurant. And everyone who got sick from this food poisoning got an insurance payout. So I had... Nice. Oh my God, how much you get? $15,000. Nice. Okay, there we go. And as a six-year-old, year old, that's amazing. <laughs> So save that. And then I knew I wanted to be in real estate. So my parents split and my mom had issues paying her mortgage. So right. she's like, I'm going to rent out rooms in the house and in the basement suite. And we're, we're going to have tenants. And then wow. I would help her work on the properties, me and my younger brother. And that's kind of how I got started in the renovation space. How old were you when she started renting out the rooms? Probably eight. Was it like weird <laughs> for you? Were you like, mom, why are we having like people live here? Or were you like, wow, this is a really good business idea. This is smart. Couldn't really understand it. All yeah. I knew, all I knew from, from my childhood of all of that, and both my parents are amazing too, both very supportive of everything that I've been doing. So they've always encouraged me. And then I could understand as far as being able to survive having yeah. the tenants and all that. That's as much as I really could understand right. about real estate. I didn't fully get it. But then when I took over that property when I was 18, it's so weird nowadays because there's so much information out there, right? It's right. like this information yeah. overload. Right. And there's all these different amazing avenues to make money in real estate. But I didn't really understand that. So I'm like, okay, this property is $25,000. It makes $850 rent. It's paid off in a few years. Let's yeah, do what that. is that math? That's a really good return. <laughs> Yeah, it's paid off in, you know, a few years. And I So just got you found a property for twenty five thousand, you bought it, and then you rented it out for eight hundred a month. Did you renovate it first? No. Okay. There was a tenant already in the property. Okay. So then waited a few years, then renovated it. I mean, oh. it was the point where I just didn't know what I was doing. So I was calling the town. I'm like, what are utilities? I have to where did you find the stuff. property? Where did you find a property for $25,000? I know it was 12 years ago, but where did you? Mm. Well, there are, and there's still cheap properties. It's So I'm from Canada. Okay. I, I don't know if I said that at the start. Yeah. But from Canada. What now part I'm of Canada? Alberta. So I grew up in a very beautiful ski mountain town, nice. which yeah. was amazing. You guys would love it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we would. I've heard of Alberta, Canada. <laughs> oh, so good. But um, expensive place. When I my parents moved there in the 90s, it was super cheap. But then when I graduated high school, it was just insanely expensive. It just blew up. So wow, got tourist town, and it was amazing. But it's hard to live there when you're you're just starting out. So I moved to Saskatchewan, which is kind of like a Midwest type vibe. It's okay. Just, there's a lot of industry, but it's flat and cold, and not a lot of people want to buy houses and, and settle there, okay. which is good because the houses are cheap, but the rents are high because there's a lot of people looking to rent and move mm -hmm. there. So then I thought this is a great place to do some real estate. But then after that first one, it was kind of like, all right, now I had to get a really high paying job so I could get more houses. Yeah. And that's where my mindset was at for a long time. I thought yeah. I just had to do it, but I had to have a high income job mm -hmm. in order to continue. I kind of found out later on that that's not necessarily true. How yeah. did you find out that wasn't true? Well, after 
a real estate conference, actually. Go uh-huh. to real estate conference. What about real the estate guys, conference? Everyone we go to, I feel like I just got a four-year degree in, in one week. You yeah. leave exhausted, but you're like, I, every time I'm like, what the heck just happened? And we didn't finally <laughs> pull the trigger until we went to a real estate conference, and we both looked at each other, and we're like, why are we waiting? And we pulled the trigger a week later. So, so cool. note to self, go to a real estate conference And right it now. helps keep that momentum, too, because it starts you off, gives you a spark, and then if you keep going to them, it just gives you right. that momentum. You're so like, you just said after the last one, we were like, I think it's really important for our business at mm-hmm. least every two to three months mm-hmm. to go to a big one again. Because every time like you start to get a little drained, it's hard at times. Then you're like, OK, you go to a conference, you feel fired up. And now we've been back on our flow again. And it was yeah. like, I think it's really important every three months to go to a big Re-up one. Re-up on the conferences. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's the best. So, so. you had a $25,000 property. You went to a conference and you're like, you got fired up and you're like, mm-hmm. I got to get more. So bought a bunch more, did wow. the the burst strategy so buy rehab rent refinance repeat yep. coin buy Brandon yeah say Turner. that again what's the burst strategy <laughs> so burr buy rehab rent refinance repeat how many times have you done this i guess 13 13 single family kind of homes that i did and just kept rolling the the money through so it was fix it up and yeah. i did a lot of the renovation work myself another thing at that real estate conference that first one one of my mentors, well, someone I met there who ended yeah. up yeah, being yeah. a mentor, right? And he said, you have to do something to build credibility for yourself. As a young investor, right. you have to do something. Add to your resume. Exactly. So he said, start a newsletter, start a blog, like start something. So I started a blog. It was called Little Investments on the Prairie. <laughs> Oh, so cute. Cute. Oh, we're gonna pull that up. Oh, for you it's guys. All, I don't I even know. know. If Can it's we put still... that on the screen? <laughs> yeah, little investments on the parade. Little House on the parade was my favorite show, by the that's way. So so that's so cute. That's like brings back so many memories. I love it. Well, I was just buying these small properties. I'm like, this is perfect. But then I came to find out I'm terrible at writing, and I didn't want to. Do... But yeah. then I found Instagram. Right. So I found the photos, the videos that really spoke to me, and especially being able to show the work, wow. being able to do my renovations, video them, and another story about. That. Because I was working as a server for a long time as yeah. well, just waitressing on the side. I had four jobs I, and just like hustling all the time, wow. increasing that income, living extremely cheap. I'd yeah, live in yeah. my van, do things like that just to so save So you had four money. jobs and you would save that money and put it back into real, into estate. real estate. What were the jobs? The four, it was just four different serving jobs. So okay. it was this wow. nightclub, that nightclub. Okay. Right. This restaurant during the day, this restaurant at and night. And then renovating houses also. Uh-huh. Busy growth. Okay. Wow. It was busy. Yeah. <laughs> but it's great. And it was just because I had, you have to really find that passion and desire because it's going to keep you going. So it's, there's a bigger picture of it. It's why am I doing this? So I don't have to work. It's the long-term gain. That's what we're in it for. So we want to build up that cash flow, that income, and then not have to worry about money, not have to work. And I think like something that we've talked about a lot, like off the podcast was like leveraging social media and Mm -hmm. like, you've been so good at it. And I think something like, I think everybody should put a little bit of time into social media, even if it's hard for you and I think that's something that's really important that worked for me and work and work for Brittany it was making yourself different you know Mm -hmm. and like she was a young female doing renovations and that Mm -hmm. was really exciting really cool to see like someone so hands-on being able she can do fix anything I've watched her videos and I'm like what she's so cool and that sets her apart that's something different and it really got attraction and when I was in person social media that's what I did with stunts was really setting myself apart Mm -hmm. so I think finding something you guys are interested in but also making it different and exciting for the audience because yeah. then it opens so many doors but before you even start I would say because sometimes that's a lot for people to even think like what yeah. makes me different what makes me stand out Gary Vee always says just record your day mm-hmm. literally whatever you're doing you're going to an appointment you're going to a showing you're gonna go you're fixing your first house like literally just record everything and the audience will tell you what they like the audience will tell you what stands out about you because you don't need to always know yeah, you, true. what like what what makes me original what makes me stand out so I would just say get your camera out try to record literally five minutes a day start from there okay and mm-hmm. then come back okay. to me. come back to me after a few months <laughs> well it's true and it's just um figuring out who you are and yeah. what how you can add value and help right. people yeah. so it's just like people are coming to your page for education or entertainment or something so yeah. you had to provide that for them so i think a big question that a lot of people are probably going to have is how did you have you had four jobs right mm-hmm. four serving jobs you had four jobs and you're doing fix and flips who was managing them did you have like a project manager 
did you have a contractor? Uh -huh. How did you manage it? That's the thing. I just did. It was all me kind of working and then it took a long time. <laughs> like, yeah. like it did. But you then I able to scale because you were, mm -hmm. you were right. doing so much after that real estate conference. That's when I, that really clicked for me that I, I could do it full time. I didn't yeah. have to. And another part of this, my timeline is getting off, but I, I did power engineering. So I, that was a job that I had that okay. I was able to get mortgages. With. Oh, I, I didn't do it for a long time, but I was able to still get a few mortgages while I had that job. And it was only you get mortgages. Well, just so I could refinance my properties. Oh, you were qualified because mm -hmm. you were a power. Exactly. Engineer. Oh, I see. I so see. You went to okay. school behind the scenes. It's okay. We share everything. Kinsey, come on in. <laughs> we share friends. We share our house. We share our finances. It's a lot sometimes. We really do. Your money Actually, affects me. I know. If she spends her money, I'm like, sweetheart, um, that that goes towards our houses. You better not be spending that. <laughs> Same with you. If I if I shop, you're like, I know. Jesse, I get a girl. At the door, I'm like, so when was the day that you were like, I'm done being an engineer? Well, it really was once I was confident in going into real estate full time. Yeah. And that's what I always wanted to do. I just didn't think I could. But then after attending these conferences, no, there's ways to use other people's money. You could use this burst strategy. Here's all these different creative ways to do it. So I always had in the back of my mind, too, I wanted to do commercial real estate after listening to podcasts and different audiobooks and things like that. So so what was kind of the segue? So now we're, where she's at now, crazy in life, is like so different than the DIY. So mm -hmm. how did that go? kind of segue and tell us kind of what you're doing now. Yeah. So now I'm investing in commercial real estate, self-storage and multifamily apartment buildings. So that's been the big transition. Been what made you want to transition from that? Was it, did single family kind of become a lot of work and you're like storage is kind of a little bit easier? It was that concept of, I had 13 single family homes. And then right. when I took over my first apartment building, that was kind of the transition into the commercial real estate space with the yeah. bigger deals. But I doubled my income and portfolio overnight with one deal. So then that's where it really clicked because I spent so many years, 10 years trying to build up that single family portfolio and then once I started getting in the bigger deals it's not that much more effort yeah, to buy see. one single family than to buy one apartment building for people just starting would you recommend getting into single family just so they can get their toes wet yeah I think it just depends who are your connections I know so many investors who got straight into commercial real estate just because that's what made sense my business partner in the self-storage industry he just got straight into self-storage he was in insurance before and then storage it, it's a lot of business so when you go in and you could turn around a business if you have that background that's where it can make sense right and with I don't know the, the rules in Canada but so for here you know in the US the tax you know savings mm -hmm. of commercial real estate is obviously really enticing for a lot of us investors so the depreciation of the asset can you do that in Canada yeah you can do that in Canada but mo my portfolio now with all the self storage is in the US so you pay taxes in the US and Canada it's quite complicated <laughs> yeah, I know. That could be probably really That's confusing. where you have an amazing accountant yeah. and attorney who can help you sort all that stuff out because it's it's way too much for me to understand. Wow. So it's just they deal with that and you get the best at being able to sort that stuff out. And then So why the, in the U.S.? Is it because your business partner is here? Yeah, or the all guy my that connections. You, right. Exactly. There's, okay. it's, there's just more people, more opportunity. I think our whole country is like the same population as the state of California. So it's like oh, there's more opportunity. more opportunity. You could still definitely do it in Canada and there's tons of opportunity there as well but all my business partners and people that I was connecting with were in the U.S. so it just kind of naturally progressed into that. So if you were going to completely start over mm -hmm. like say you're 18 again but you have all the knowledge that you have today mm -hmm. what would you have done differently like how would you start? Yeah I think some of the most important things was building the brand building that trust and credibility yeah. so starting that right, right away. away and then probably I would jump more fully into the commercial real estate space but it's hard because I love my path I love everything yeah. that I've done so there isn't much that I would actually change which yeah. is hard to say because the skills and the problem solving skills and the knowledge that was built through renovating the properties and it was just great experience and then I built up trust with my investors and now we have accredited investors in our storage facilities and it was just really cool to be able to build those connections with investors and then you know provide this opportunity for them and storage is still so much different than multifamily. Yeah. So which one too. do you prefer? Both so different. So I, yeah. I like to be diversified as well. Uh -huh. So now I just bought a multifamily building in Canada as nice. well. Nice. So How many units? 15. 
Okay. Yeah. See that right there doubles your houses. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Keep doubling them. You yeah. Know, it's like every year. That's amazing. <laughs> and it can it can snowball pretty quickly once you you have that base and knowledge and understanding, and then right. they, it's easier to analyze. You know more people. This, I wasn't even looking for this deal. It came yeah. to me through connections and yeah. then Instagram in the end. So, so it was you, something I wasn't even looking for. You talk about connections a lot. Where when you were like eighteen, mm-hmm. what did you do to start making connections? Because I think a lot of people are stuck with that. That. They think like, okay, I'm not, I don't live in LA. I'm not super well connected yet. Yeah. And they don't really know how to start. Where would you direct those people to go? Well, it's all social media. It's like um, one to many, right? Because right. you're still building a bond with people through Instagram stories yeah. and podcasts yeah. and really? things like that. And we don't know them, but they feel like they know us right. just through the social media space, which is really cool because yeah. you can connect with a lot of people that way. So that's how I would suggest starting. You could message people on Instagram. I learned how to do a lot of trades even that way because I would I'd be tiling a project a right. shower I wouldn't know how to do it and I would message people on Instagram hey is this right <laughs> and you can post it too like yesterday I posted our hedges at one of our mm-hmm. properties and someone commented an investor that we know and he's like hey by the way this needs to be moved back 10 inches because yeah. of the code in West Hollywood and it saved us some time and I'm like wow it is nice to just like mm-hmm. show everyone what you're doing and you get like feedback and you get people following your journey you get more investors so back to the content start filming start <laughs> today and we actually get that feedback from so many yeah. people that have been on the podcast it's just mm-hmm. creating content we're yeah. in a completely different society now where it is like you don't have to be on tv you yeah. can literally just even like to the people that you know around you a lot of ways that we fund our deals and i'm sure with you is by opm which is yeah. other people's money and you'd be so surprised even if you have two thousand followers and it's just your family and your friends post all the time yeah. that you're investing into real estate mm-hmm. show them what you're doing the more that we post every day we get a new person that it's not even just one of our followers it's someone that knows us personally who's a friend or family who's like this is really cool how do I get involved how do I invest and the more that we're consistent the more we get these messages and it's actually easier for us it's been to raise money from those people because they know us and they trust us so even if you don't have a huge following you guys put yourself out there because your friends and family are gonna be like whoa that's pretty cool like can I get in on that I promise Uh, yeah I would say pretend you already have a fan base like pretend people care pretend people are watching you they really are even if you don't get a lot of messages right away like we've had people that this guy that we met a couple days ago that wants to invest with us he's like i've been following your journey since day one i've never heard from this guy and it's like people follow you that you don't even know that look up to you so keep going and pretend that close your eyes and be like people are watching me and inspired by me know that when you're doing content yeah and it's true you can change people's lives so you have to flip this script because i think a lot of people feel uncomfortable i don't want it to be all about me and it's like this weird feeling but if you put it out oh no I'm actually helping people here and I'm changing people's lives potentially because it's true I think that's helped me as well speaking on stage and different things like that because I I was alone for so many years just working on my property so I haven't done even a lot of podcasts or a lot of speaking stuff so I was super nervous all the time doing it but then once I just started thinking about it like that no I'm putting it to the audience I'm helping them instead of making it about me you just have to make it about them speaking of that you just I don't know if you guys know of bigger pockets but if you guys are into real estate at all which I'm sure if you're watching the pod yeah, you're into right. real estate you know of bigger pockets I mean that we've looked at but we watched bigger pockets videos for 10 years yeah mm-hmm. so it's like you just had the opportunity to speak at the bigger pockets conference yes. how was that yes. oh my that god was so, so exciting so cool oh, thank you did it, it go so, well it was so good it was amazing so like what what did you talk about it was it like your own thing or did they mm-hmm. want you to talk about something specific I did commercial real estate and social media so okay. It's, okay. it's how to create content around in social media and then the commercial real estate world and my transition from the single family to commercial real estate. How do you make content like, cause you're not on the job every day, right? So how, I guess cause single family, it's like, we're very like hands on. There's always something that needs to be done. You're doing commercial and you're like renting out the units. Mm-hmm. How, are, how do you create content around that? There's always something, like you said, it's just what are your days look like? Right. And it's, it's every day you're analyzing deals or you're hiring employees. It's been a big transition for me. I always, always thought I'm going to be a lone wolf. I'm not going to have employees. I'm not going to do that. I just thought I'd be alone doing my thing. And then once I started realizing the power of that leverage of having people, how important that is. A really great book too, Who Not How. Yeah, (laughs) I love that one. Turner told us this when we had him on the podcast. And 
and I haven't got a chance to read it. Well, there you I'm go. Really it's recommended twice now. So I know. We gotta now we got to read it. Who, not how, you guys. It's been Dan recommended Sullivan. twice on the Dan pod. Sullivan, who, not how. It's so good because it just gets you thinking so differently about really understanding who you are, your skill set, and then getting rid of everything else. So yeah. where are you in the best energy? How can you be creative? And now I really understand that about myself, but it took a while. You know, what do I even right. want to do? What am I good at? And now I have this amazing team and even the property stuff. I have a COO under me and then under my COO, there's a property manager and then I have content creators. I have a bunch of people, but now I don't even have to think about my properties and the tenants and the maintenance because I have people who can take care of all that, which has been incredible because I was so used to just doing it all. I was doing bookkeeping, property management, all of it. Bookkeeping, like, that's what we were like, oh my God, the time commitment we'd put into bookkeeping, we're like, we Yeah, and if you mess one thing up, you're like, oh, wait a second, when did I pay that guy $1,000? <laughs> that's not in the books. Yeah. <laughs> you, you mess up on that. I'm like, I'm not a CPA, so yeah. this, this is hard. <laughs> and it's so important, but if, yeah. if it's not your skill set, you don't want to do it. You have yeah. to focus on what you're great at. But that's yeah. why I love real estate too, because there's so many different ways. Do you love numbers? That yeah. works for real estate. Right. Do you love being creative and design? That works for real estate. Business, that works for real estate. There's just, there's so many different ways. Once you can understand your skills. What's your skill? What's your biggest skill? What do you look at yourself and think like, this is what I'm the best at? Well, I think the connections <laughs> I'll say go, it connection. but I like being this big funnel to yeah. to meet accredited investors to meet partners to do all of that and then I love being able to get through to people who are just starting out or or stuck in a rut or struggling in yeah. life life is hard so I want to be able to say you know I've been there I understand that but it gets better and there's a great way to do it through real estate so I love being able to provide that for people too so yeah. where do you think from here now that you know know you've kind of figured out who you are what you're good at Mm -hmm. where do you see yourself in your business in five years that's a great question and I always write out these great vivid visions and dreams and goals and then something changes drastically in three years True. Because yeah. in 2019, that was when I started connecting with Brandon, we mentioned before, and my business partner, AJ Osborne, and this incredible group of 20 investors. Wow. And then I completely changed my mindset. And a lot of the time it is just in our heads, holding us back from certain things. Right. Even though we know it in our gut, in our soul, what we want to do, but then we have excuses and fears that hold us back. So it happens a lot. <laughs> Literally to everybody. <laughs> so then after meeting all these people, I'm, I thought, I can do this. I can absolutely be who I I'm supposed to be and yeah. and work towards those goals and visions but I couldn't even imagine 10 years ago I never would expect where I am today so right. so it's been a really cool journey and I'm just excited for that but now I'm kind of like all right I have a little bit more balance because it was so work focused for yeah. so long which I love that I'm always going to be hustling in some way but I feel like you're speaking a lot more too as far as like conferences and like traveling work. too you've been yeah. traveling a lot which is beautiful like you can't we always say like we want to like we see the workhorses of the real estate environment yeah. and we like we, even like Alex Hermosi and, and Layla mm-hmm. I don't know if like how you felt from their speech and we were like it was so motivating and they really said go all in on mm-hmm. one thing and work 16 hour days and we felt a little bit different by we're like we totally support that and we see where he's going but we just value so much life is for living you yeah. know and the reason we love real estate is to provide that freedom we love to travel we love to spend the weekends with our friends like I want financial freedom so that I can do those things yeah. so I feel like it's really important to like have a balance so you've yeah. kind of found that recently a little bit well okay, I okay. could say a little bit more yeah, <laughs> and yeah, then yeah, meanwhile every day I'm like yeah, so you're, yeah. Pro- you're definitely like I would say probably traveling more right mm-hmm. and speaking more and making like different connections versus just being in Canada and flipping the houses and being so focused on that which I think for you you probably thrive like you said on making connections yes yeah. and the growth one thing I understand about myself now is that the growth is so important to me right. and they, Tony Robbins had this thing where there's these six like human needs I guess it's kind of more stability variety growth connection significance and love and connection I think I've heard this speech right yeah so it's great because then once you could understand that about yourself I love the growth aspect of it whether it's personal development or real estate or whatever it is so I think that's something that's I value and once I did those tests I could understand that because I always thought okay I'm gonna reach this financial freedom number and And then I'm just gonna stop I always thought that and then I met a bunch of people who are later on in their careers they could definitely never work again and they're still grinding away and I'm like okay that's that's more my future the goal isn't and we just got asked this who asked us that 
Sean, right? Two days ago, I think. Yeah, he was Mm. like, is your goal to, like, retire and just, like, golf and just, like, be on a yacht or, like, be at the beach with your family all the time? And I'm like, like, I think what makes us thrive really is, like, growing. Like, it's not the making the money. It's not the... The connections are great, but I think just as a person, Mm. what you go through when you're making connections, when you're making money, when you're at a very high level, the growth as a human, that's what keeps us going. Like, that's Mm -hmm. what's so exciting is, like, facing your fears and doing things that people are, like, other people are scared to do. And then when you break through that and you do what other people are scared to do, you inspire more people to do that. So it's like this spiral effect of like you becoming a better person, you, you know, inspiring other people to become better people. And I think that's like, that's everyone's passion. And it's cool because something that real estate offers more than I've seen a lot of careers, I mean, is that you're constantly facing a new challenge yeah. and there's so unlimited growth potential. So you, you know, and you unlimited can, channel, challenges. Yeah, so unlimited <laughs> challenges. So it's like you go through this thing and it's so hard and then you get to the other end you never thought was possible and so it's like so cool to know that there's not like that ceiling I think when I was like a nurse I was like wait okay I'm kind of bored like what yeah. what am I working towards I'm going to be a nurse manager like in 10 yeah. years versus now it's like we always have a new goal and something exciting to look forward to and then on the really hard days you look at it and they're like I don't know if I can get through and then we do and you have this like feeling uh, inside you that's like really unparalleled like yeah. I just can't describe where you're just like you make yourself proud you know and I think that's a beautiful feeling to yeah. always know that like you can you set your mind to it and you do it yeah and that's how it is there's always challenges and there's always stuff to work through and it never ends no matter what level you're at but it does get way easier because you can solve the problems faster and you have more people around you I think you learn how to solve problems quicker like the first flip that we did it was like every little thing it was like we would have heart attacks or like at least me I was like oh my god we're not gonna get through this and then you know once the neighbors called the cops like 10 times you're like okay well they've already done this like what Mm -hmm. can we do now like another day another cops being called on my property and permits being violated but you yeah. know it doesn't affect me as much mm-hmm. as it did when I first started and I think you kind of have you build up a tolerance mm-hmm. to deal with a lot more than I think you ever thought possible that's so true and it is I think that's an important point too having that calm under pressure that yeah. equanimity of dealing with that sort of which stuff which that so. doesn't come natural that's no. actually never come natural to me at all no. I'm the most dramatic I freak out all the time but I'm learning <laughs> she I, keeps me entertained I do keep <laughs> entertained but I think I'm learning especially through Kinsey but also through this job of like oh my god is the house on fire no and even if the house is on fire okay let's yeah, get water a hurricane hit my house and yeah I was like eh, okay well. I know I was gonna say that and then I was like there actually was a hurricane that hit your house <laughs> but yeah, seriously like, oh. the hurricane hit her house and it's like okay she has this mindset of like babe what can I do about it mm-hmm. nothing I can call someone when things calm down to go check on the property fix the water damage but that's all I can do and I think having that kind of like calm and ability to solve those problems to the best you can and then let it go and not try to like overly do anything is a skill set you learn doesn't it doesn't come right away yeah I think running the worst case scenario so if you run the worst case scenario you can really expect it (laughs) you can you can go through if you're trying to quit your job and then you're freaking out should I do this is this the right move we get stuck in this analysis paralysis and all these what if questions but then if you run the worst case scenario and accept it if that happens if the house catches on fire we will deal with it and figure it out and move on from there so I feel like we always do that when we're getting I mean for me I'm always like run the worst case scenario possible and then when shit hits the fan you're like I, I know she's taught me that because I don't run any worst case. I'm like an eternal optimist. So mm-hmm. I just like think in the clouds at all times. So then she's like, well, can this, 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 this can go wrong. I'm like, well, I never thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> so then when it does happen, I'm a little more let down, but we balance each other really, yeah, really yeah, well. Yeah. Okay. So what would be your three biggest tips right now that if you were talking to your 18 year old little sister getting started in real estate, what would you give her? Yeah. So I would say you're capable of so much more than you think you are too is just listen to your heart and follow your energy because it is the right thing even though there are really hard days just keep yeah. moving through it because you know you're on the right path and then keep up your network your connections build that brand and really focus in on that okay before we close out I'd want to know is there anything that I know you just talked about what you would tell your younger self is there anything that you would tell people nowadays because things have changed since 12 mm-hmm. years ago so getting into real estate yeah high level tip. Yeah, a high level tip of like, 
hey, I, hey, Britt, I want to get started, but like, I don't even know where to start. What would, what would your advice be? The market has changed a lot. And seller financing is a really cool thing to mm. look into right now. In my apartment building, the one that came through Instagram, the 15 unit, I'm getting that with zero of my own money into it because I'm getting it seller financed. So the bank is coming in with 80% with a mortgage and then the extra 20% down, the seller is financing and he's also going to finance some of the renovations. So I'm coming in with none of my own money and I wasn't even looking through this for a deal. And then it just came across What's my plate. What's the interest on like a seller financing? 4%. So it's going to be amazing. Girl. <laughs> wow. And I knew better to it seller. down. Are you serious? What's the reason he's selling? And my bank is giving me 4.5%. It's a different kind of loan. It's in Canada, but it's backed by the government and they have different programs. So if you do the environmental program, you have to replace all the windows and the doors and things like that, that you would do either way. And then they will give you a lower interest rate. So it's called CMHC financing. C CMHC financing. Yes. And then they will allow the seller financing as well. So that is my strategy right now. And there's always a way. So if there's a problem that comes up, this deal isn't working, there's this problem, that problem, figure out a different way. Yeah. You can find seller financing. You could get other people's money. You just have to really be creative with it. I want to go back to the seller financing because that's like something that we, I mean, this is so interesting to me. How did you get that property? They met the owner message you on Instagram? Yeah, the owner just knew who I was through okay. the real estate space and then he actually wasn't selling the building at all but he had a buyer approach him and they went through the six month process and commercial real estate is a whole different game you need a ton of inspections you put a lot of money into the reports and the environmental reports yeah. and all of this different stuff because the bank needs to see that because the bank wow. is lending based on the building itself not as much right. based on you which I love that too because yeah. that means the building's making money because yeah. if there's a default they take the building back which is great so that's another reason I love commercial real estate so much as well so how it came through after that seller fell through he wanted to get rid of the building because it was just this whole process already that he wasn't even planning to sell it but then he went through the whole process of trying to sell it and it's this huge thing you had to get all the reports in I actually knew the person who backed out of the deal so I knew this this buyer just it's a small investor world you kind of yeah. know everybody so I I'm, and she just didn't want to do real estate anymore she moved moved away she kind of got rid of everything and then I'm like I'll take it let's go and so I'm buying it for a million and after repair value probably three or four hundred thousand into renovations it should be worth 2.6 million so it's a pretty big number once you can get into that game and is there like a prepayment penalty or something if you pay off the loan yeah if there is a prepayment penalty if I refinanced it yeah, might be worth it still it still Refi could be worth it Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. So the term with the seller is five year balloon payment. So I'm going to do interest only payments for five years. And then after the five years, I'll make the balloon payment and pay them back. So that's the plan for that. But it's wow. cool because I got into the deal with no money and there's so many creative ways to do real estate. You just have to think outside the box. Yeah, we actually went to a real estate networking event and this was probably a few weeks ago. Alex Camacho. Yeah. yeah. You know, Alex, um, small real estate investor world. Yeah, and he's the best. That he's was best. something I took away. You know, the market is changing and a lot of people are getting afraid. A lot of people are nervous to make yeah. a move. But I think for us, it's been more exciting because it's less competition yeah. and you have more distressed sellers and there's always ways to find a deal. So never get discouraged because all of a sudden that excuse is going to stop you. Mm -hmm. So now be like, okay, the market's changing. How do I use that in my favor? So now you have a lot more distressed sellers and with distressed sellers, you can come to them and be like, hey, you can't sell the property. I can see that it's been sitting on the market. How about I give you this seller financing option and, uh, you know, subject to your mortgage to me. And there's a lot more of that opportunity. Six months ago in the crazy market, heck no, mm -hmm. you would get us. I mean, you never know, but it would yeah. be be a lot yeah. harder to get a subject to so Alex was talking about that at the last meetup so in that little phrase right there go to a meetup because then you're going to learn something new so we've been really looking into subject to because it hasn't been something that was on our radar yeah. before so keep and now seller financing because now I'm like so interested in that. Yeah. <laughs> like how do we find a seller financing maybe we should post that I know right? anybody want to seller finance this for us because mm -hmm. I mean if it's having such a low interest rate like that and mm -hmm. having like it be seller finance because like we use hard money and it's like 11 mm percent -hmm. that eats into your profit so much so to have like four percent that would be like an extra fifty sixty thousand in your pocket yeah 
And it really is just getting to know the seller. What are their needs? What do they want? Because yeah. it might not be just the price if you're buying, you know, Go there's through. always room to negotiate and you just have to understand them and then make it work for both of you. Right. Wow. Have you read The Art of Negotiation? No, I think you, you have split the difference. You probably just how to negotiate you know? through so many deals that you've done, right? It's true. Through experience. Mm -hmm. And you just have to learn how to talk to people and understand what they need and then kind of go from there. But it is a people's game. It really is. Right. Yeah. And then making cold calls, same thing when I was buying the self-storage facilities and, and just cold calling sellers and getting to know them and what they wanted to sell their property for. And a lot of the time, or not even what they'd sell it for, but if they would be willing to sell. Right. And then a lot of the time, you wouldn't expect it, but there's so many people out there who aren't thinking about selling, but as soon as you pick up the phone and then you put it in their head and you continue to follow up and just be nice and be a person, you know, you don't have to be an aggressive salesperson. You just explain who you are, that you're an investor, you love their property. And then a lot of the time they will come back around and I've gotten a lot of deals that way. Well, wow. there you go, folks. Communication. I would say that's a huge thing. So focus on communication and the, a good book I would recommend is how to influence. What's the book? Oh Car yeah. Carnegie. By Carnegie. Yeah. Uh, how to win, how to win friends, friends and, and influence, influence people. people. Because that really is, it's a people game. Like it's, if you want someone to sell you something at a lower price, you just have to understand what their needs are. So yeah. thank you so much for being on the podcast. We learned so much. I know. Now we have a yacht party to go to. So if you guys want to see how about the yacht party, you got to follow Investor Girl Bright on Instagram and us, of course. But thank you so much for coming on. You can find her at Investor Girl Bright. Her, all the work she does is so incredible. She's so fun to follow. So if you're interested in real estate and you like a fun form of it, she's awesome. Send her a message. She's super cool. Yeah, well, we're going to put all of her info below. Where would you direct people to go? Yeah, Instagram's Instagram. number one. My website's BrittanyArneson.com. BrittanyArneson.com. Invest to Grow Brit is her Instagram. Check her out. Are you coming out with any courses or anything? Uh, we have a group, REI Circle. So we, we really help people who are trying to get into the commercial real estate state cool. space and starting to think bigger and you know I want to do bigger deals so my well, business send us that link we'll put yeah. it in the description if anyone's interested in getting into commercial real estate I, I am it. so I'm gonna check it out <laughs> yeah we're gonna check it <laughs> out well but thank you guys for tuning into Blondes Building Equity you guys will see us every single week uh, we love you so much make sure you hit that like subscribe comment your feedback who you want to see because we always need amazing new guests we mm -hmm. learn so much from these people so we will see you guys next week